BattleBit Remastered is, on the surface, a pretty simple looking game. I don't think we can dispute that. So, one may, fairly might I add, assume that its gameplay also takes on board a pretty simple approach. Spoiler alert, it does not. BattleBit is a game of mechanical depth, and sometimes that comes in places you may not be expecting. Today's video is all about going through some of those details to give you a better understanding of the game as you jump in. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we're going to be going over everything you need to know about playing BattleBit Remastered. Also, for the visibility of everyone here, the details of the next playtest that is scheduled is up on your screens now, so if you're interested in checking out the game, be sure to come on by, it's a great opportunity. But anyway, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video, and I firstly want to cover some of the basics at a surface for those who have either never heard of this game, or who have and still have no idea as to what the hell is going on here. This is a large-scale first-person shooter game, sporting 250-ish player servers that play across multiple objective based game modes. Within those teams of players you'll find squads that can contain up to eight players at a time which are then comprised of six playable classes. Some classes gain access to unique weapon categories and gear items that allow them to achieve different roles on the battlefield. They are Squad Leader, which can equip a Soflam goggles and utilize ARs and DMRs. The Assault Class, your standard Assault Class to be honest, rocking Assault Rifles, small ammo packs and grapple hooks. Engineers, which are either a vehicle's best friend or worst nightmare, being able to take on board a slew of RPGs and or a repair tool. The Medic, which is the lifeblood of any force. This is a class that comes with an extended capacity of bandages, as well as a medical kit for healing allies directly. The Support Class, which is basically, you know, you like the sound of Ducker, this is the class for you. Rocking LMGs and ammo packs, this class is all about setting up and just saying kind of no to anyone who tries to cross that sightline of yours. And Recon, and like how the support is the paint roller of the battlefield, the Recon is the scalpel. Rocking sniper rifles to eliminate foes over distance, we all know what this class is about. There's currently a limited amount of vehicles in the game as well, coming in the form of light transport vehicles, some armed and some not, as well as APCs and MBTs. At this stage, all sounding pretty similar to experiences that you would find in uh, other first-person shooter games out there, but BattleBit does some things just a tad differently. You've probably gotten into your first few matches by now, and I'm going to assume that you've had the chance to shoot at a few bad guys. You've probably seen a couple of different kinds of hit markers in the process. Specifically, this random old little blue hit marker that pops up every now and then. Well, ladies and gentlemen, every soldier in this game carries armor in the form of helmets and body armor, and this blue hit marker indicates that you have hit said body armor. Doing a bit of an introductory deep dive into the character customization, body armor and other articles of clothing that appear to have customization options but not many customizations at this time in the playtesting stage, appear to affect things like your carrying capacity for gear items, but armor also has its own health pools that will assist you in surviving a couple of extra hits. Now, the scope of this armor and how exact the hitboxes are, for example, does the body armor on your character's chest take up the entirety of the torso, or does it have exact hitboxes that will impact whether or not you hit flesh or armor, is yet to be confirmed by me. But I can tell you based on my experience that any hits to your armor will not cause any bleeding effects on your character. If a developer happens to jump in the comments here and confirms the mechanics of how armor works in this game a bit more, I'll pin said comment to the top of the section for easy reading for the rest of you. But anyway, the point here being is that going for those headshots given the presence of armor in this game is incredibly important, and will let you maximize your time to kill given that armor in some cases appears to be able to tank anywhere between two to three shots. Once again, I plan on doing a lot more testing in due time, but for now, just know that armor is a thing and it should be worth considering. Now, let's just say that you've decided to employ your inner Forrest Gump and just start running through fire hoping for the best. And by sheer luck, you live. Chances are, you've been hit and you're bleeding. Bleeding mechanics is something that you see in games like Squad or other milsims, but less so in games that take on board this pace of gameplay, so it might be something that catches you off guard. If you notice that you're bleeding, and the game will tell you, you need to get out your bandages and hold down the bandage button to start the bandage process. Once completed, you'll stop the bleeding but 
you won't be fully healed, and you won't regenerate health over time either in this game. This is where your good mate, the combat medic, comes into play. Seek a combat medic out to get the healing you require, and you'll be right as rain. Bandages are also used to revive allies that are downed on the ground, which does mean that everyone in the game, regardless of class, can actually revive a player from a downed state, but the combat medic can do it a little faster, which still makes the class a must pick for supportive players. So in other words, play like a team and keep allies up wherever you can and don't bleed out. And on the topic of being a supportive player, we've all seen this from time to time, haven't we? Team embracing their inner Leroy Jenkins and charging out into what Aussie Man Reviews likes to call destination fucked, that is. And now they're screaming at you in the proximity chat to come and revive them because, well, they're clearly just the most important person in the world, right? Well, in most games, we'd shrug it off and just keep going because, well, I ain't gonna risk my bacon to revive someone who's out in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. But in Battlebit, there are dragging mechanics and you are able to drag downed players behind cover to get in safe revives. Note how I didn't say downed allies specifically here. Because yes, you can also drag downed enemies as well. And let's just say that snatching a downed enemy while he screams profanity in your direction, it's something you don't get to experience in many other titles. It's truly hilarious. And while I don't see myself kidnapping opponents often, it's got some charm to it. Now, I feel like it's only fair I need to preface this because the next thing on our list here might sound like a strange thing to mention, but I promise you there's a point to it. Reloading. You know, no one likes to do it. We've all played a lot of first person shooter games, each play a little differently, but there's one constant whether it be Call of Duty, Battlefield, Apex Legends, Titanfall, Planetside, they all handle reloading and ammo pool mechanics the exact same way. You pull the required ammunition to sort of quote unquote refill the magazine that you're reloading back into the gun from an ammo pool, and you either do this with a short slash tactical reload or a long reload, with the long reload triggering on an empty magazine. Well, in Battlebit, things are slightly different here. Here, you carry a select amount of distinct magazines that each have their own ammunition counts. And when you reload, that ammunition count will remain in that magazine as you cycle through the rest of your magazines between reloads. This is opposed to following the let's just refill this magazine logic that a lot of other games seem to take on board with their ammo pool mechanics. So you have to be a bit more deliberate with your reloads here because while yes, reloading after every kill will theoretically prepare you for those crowd control scenarios, it'll eventually leave you with a bunch of half-filled magazines, which ain't sustainable either. But that's not all here. Battlebit also takes the reloading mechanic just that one step further with an option for a quote-unquote tactical combat reload as well. If you hold down your reload key, as opposed to cycling the old magazine back into your inventory, you're just discarded on the ground for the benefit of a faster reload. So there's a bit more to the decision-making process here as well when it comes to picking your reloads in this game. Is it always worth asking the question to yourself, you know, okay, how many more rounds are in this mag? Is it worth keeping? Or should I just go for the tactical reload and get back in the fight quicker? I found that by working this into your decision making, you can become slightly more efficient with your downtime and your reloads, and also not leave yourself with a bunch of really empty magazines that aren't gonna do much good for you. If you notice yourself really putting in a lot of hard work with a mag and basically getting it to less than five rounds remaining, there's no point in keeping it. Just dump it for a faster reload and get back into the battle fast. Now, next up, and this is something I really didn't expect to see in this game, rocket launchers. And no, not just the rocket launchers on their own, but how they work. You see, most games are pretty simple, guys. Whip out the rocket launcher, point it at something you just wish, you know, wasn't there, fire, and then start cleaning up what's left behind of the bad guy with a mop. Not in Battlebit. In Battlebit, not only are you presented with three different types of RPG that each have their own specialized purposes and roles, but then you also look down the sights and see this monstrosity of a reticule. What the hell? does this all mean? It looks confusing as hell, but hear me out. We'll go over each of the round types real quickly, and then we'll go into how to read this scope in battle to, and believe it or not, always hit your target no matter the distance it is away from you. First up, you've got your fragmentation rounds, which are designed specifically with the intent of hitting infantry targets hard, thanks to their high area of effect damage payload. The heat explosive rounds excel at dealing with transport and lightly armored APC vehicles as well. They're also great bunker busters dealing with walls and fortified positions and buildings very well. And I mean, 
if you can hit some poor infantry player directly with one, it gets the job done as well. Then we move on to the Chungus of the RPG world, the tandem round. This round is designed to make tanks wish they hadn't taken that left turn and instead just stayed in spawn. And the heavier round makes for a much slower muzzle velocity as a result, so take that into consideration as well. But okay, you now know what kind of target you want to delete from the map and you know what to equip as a result. But now comes the hard part of actually hitting the sod with the scope you are using here. No matter which RPG model you pick up, the reticle is going to look identical. And to make matters even more confusing at times, the way in which this sight reads changes depending on which round you pick. So here's how you make sense of things. If you are using the heat or the fragmentation round, we will only be using the top half of this scope only. The top cross here is your zero point and is ranged for 50 meters. So if you want to hit a target that's really close for you, you don't want to aim using the center of the scope. The round will just sort of fly overhead and you'll just sort of be left sitting there looking like a bit of an idiot. We don't want that. So, and this is advice I would give in literally no other games, but get used to aiming a little bit lower and then you'll be able to hit some targets in CQC. The smaller cross below that is ranged for 100 meters. And as we can see down what looks like an Excel spreadsheet, we have the numbers two to five. The more observant of you may have worked out here by now that those lines represent the ranging points for 200 to 500 meters respectively. Meaning that for the heat and fragmentation rounds, you can effectively range these launches up to 500 meters and hit targets accurately should you need to. But the big Bertha, that being the tandem round, plays by her own rules here. The tandem round makes use of both the upper part and the lower part of the scope as well, because as we hinted earlier, this round is heavier, thus producing way more drop over time. Our zero point for this round is not the cross at the top of the scope, but instead the double line here that actually represents 300 meters for the prior two rounds. For the tandem round, this is our 50 meter range. And as we look down the center line here, we can see another few lines that are marked by the numbers 1, 1.5, and 2. Can you guess what this means? That's right. Those are the 100, 150, and 200 meter range points for the tandem rounds. So yeah, quite an aggressive amount of drop. Basically get ready to start cuddling enemy armor if you plan on using this round. It hits like a truck though, so it's well worth the payoff. So go forth and level the map and everyone around it with your RPG knowledge, my friends. And let's just say you have woken up and chose violence by picking an RPG with the heat round. Destruction is very much a thing here in this game. Every wall in the game that has a brick-like texture can be wiped out and used as a new flanking opportunity, a new firing angle, or a means to expose that cheeky sniper that's been lingering around just that little bit too long. Some buildings are made up entirely of these destructible surfaces. That means, yes, buildings can be completely destroyed as per necessary. A bit of fun for those interested in just leveling the map and well it's good to see destruction in a game like this and well have it pulled off nicely. And I've left this little detail about the game here until last because it's a feature that you'll be playing very little of in the rotation of maps and modes. But night combat is a thing in this game and with it becomes a collection of unique mechanics including night vision goggles. These can be manually turned on and off when in a night battle but they do come with some caveats. For example, closed ring optics such as medium to high range magnification zoom optics, and even closed top CQC scopes like the aimpoint sight cannot be used with night vision goggles, which means that sniping becomes less than ideal at night. Additionally, laser sights gain a trackable laser, which is great for hip firing on your end, but it's also visible to the enemies potentially giving your position away. Just something to consider going forward. You can also opt to run flashlights and flares to blind hostiles using the NVGs, so the world is your oyster with night combat here. It's arguably one of the better implementations of night combat I've seen in a first person shooter game like this. So if you do end up playing on a night map, well then now you've got some tools of the trade to make the most of it in those situations. But folks, that's enough talking from me. I want to hear in the comment section down below from you guys what your thoughts are on Battlebit Remastered and whether or not you've got any extra tips to share in relation to this game. These are all of the things I wish I knew about sooner when I was getting into the game, so hopefully this video does provide some value to those who are just starting out. If so, please feel free to backhand the like button. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. And if you're new here, consider backhanding that subscribe button whilst you're at it, guys. As I said before, leave a comment down below with your thoughts or tips and tricks on how to play the game. Would love to hear what you guys have to say and if you want to support the channel further consider using my join button down below to become a channel member and support us monetarily every month once again guys i hope you enjoyed today's video peace out and i will see you guys all in the next one take care guys have a good one